Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. After a recent video showing Sphinx excavation photographs from the 1920s and 30s, I went on the hunt for more and came across something I'd never seen before. Actual video footage of the Sphinx excavation and renovation work from nearly a hundred years ago. Most of the vintage black and white footage of the Sphinx comes after the 1930s, and you can tell this because the headdress has been restored. But finding footage of the Sphinx pre 1930s is incredibly rare. In fact, such footage is generally stored on archives. Archives owned by private companies, and it never gets to see the light of day. Many of you have seen this, and this was recorded in 1897, yes, a staggering age, and you can see the Sphinx pre restoration. It was filmed by Alexandra Promio sometime between March and April 1897. It was first screened in Lyon in France on April the 25th of the same year under the title Egypt Les Pyramids et la Sphinx, and is now part of the Lumiere film catalogue. The video has been professionally cleaned up, and recently, the YouTube channel History in Colour has colourised it and published it. They've allowed me to show it on my channel, but please see their channel and subscribe, as they do have many amazing historic video restoration projects. I've left a link in the description below. Now, the footage I've discovered this week was in black and white. It was incredibly grainy and full of noise, with very little contrast in the shades of grey, and of course it was low resolution. Some of it was also flipped horizontally. I'm no expert in video restoration, but I sharpened the video as best I could, added a little more contrast, and also attempted to colourise the footage to bring it back to life nearly a hundred years after it was filmed. I found the footage on the Huntley Film Archive, a private company that discovers vintage video footage, digitises it and preserves it, before making it available for commercial use. The cost of this footage for me as a YouTuber was way out of my price range, but the good people with the Huntley Film Archive have allowed me to publish the footage with their watermarks still in place. What I'm about to show are clips from three separate videos. The first 20 seconds is from the Huntley Archive, and I believe it dates back to 1916. I've colourised it the best I can, and it shows the Australian and New Zealand Army, or Anzac forces that were stationed in Egypt in World War I. We see a large group of men that appear to have climbed the Great Sphinx, and they stand or sit on its back and shoulders. The second clip is 24 seconds long. I paid for this clip from another archive and also colourised it. It dates to the 1920s and shows the Emil Berezi excavation and restoration project of the Sphinx in the 1920s. The remainder of the video also shows more segments from the Berezi excavation, not just the 1920s but also the 30s. The first half of the footage is either from 1925 or 1926, as this is when the scaffolding went up around the head. The end of the footage is likely from the early 1930s, as we can see the headdress has been restored. Due to the clarity, the footage is arguably better to view on a small screen compared to a large, but either way, I'll now play the full video, and afterwards I'll mention some key points of interest you may have missed when watching it first time round. Of course, if you note anything of interest, please leave a comment below. And also, if you don't like the presentation style, don't worry. I'll play it again at the end of this video, with no silent film production style and no red curtains. Thank you for watching and enjoy.
so that's the footage and yes it is a shame I couldn't play it without the watermarks but I do hope you enjoyed my efforts colorizing it anyway. In the early part with the Anzac soldiers, it is fascinating to note the condition of the limestone, and you can see the original cracks in the body of the Sphinx. The crack we see at the rump of the monument is a geological fissure, and it runs straight through the entire Sphinx enclosure. This was later filled in by Emil Barese in his somewhat crude restoration work. It does pain me that Barese never released any report of his observations, excavations or restoration work, so video footage really is priceless. You can also see in the 1916 footage, the front paws are covered by sand, and we can see a crude stone wall, probably erected to try and hold back the sand. Skipping ahead to the 1920s, and the poor condition of the limestone is clear to see again. We then see this close up of the restoration of the head from the back, and then from the side looking north. The Dream Stealer is still in place, but the two stele of Ramesses II that were placed either side of it had already been removed in the 19th century. I believe that these went to the Louvre and British Museums in France and Britain. The remainder of the video really focuses on the social history, the workers going about their jobs. For me, it was interesting to see the methods employed by the Egyptians to remove the sand and rubble, hand operating what looked like minecarts on tracks. This man could well be Barese himself, as it looks like he's giving out instructions and watching over the work being done. Of course, it could just be a Western tourist. Here in the foreground we can see the baskets being used to collect the sand and debris, which was then transferred to the carts, before being taken away from the excavation site. Also note this dark mud brick structure in the background. This was another Sphinx temple discovered and excavated by Emil Barese. It was built later than the main Sphinx temple, and also later than that of Amenhotep II. It could be 19th, 21st or 26th dynasty, but we sadly don't know. Barese pulled down this structure, and he never made any record, and so this structure is totally lost to history. I made a video about this structure a few years ago, and it's linked below in the description. Here as we pan around, we can see another structure now also long gone. I believe that this is the rest house of Tutankhamun, later reused by Ramesses the Great. We can see Jebel Ghibli in the background, and then what looks like the remains of the New Kingdom mud brick boundary wall of the Sphinx enclosure. This is a great view, as we watch the truly arduous task of pushing the rubble and sandfield carts uphill. Now we're into the 1930s. The Sphinx headdress has been restored, and the enclosure is now somewhat tidier, and the Khafre Valley Temple is now coming into view. Here again we can see the wind eroded blocks of the Valley Temple up close. At this time the work of Emil Barese is done. The Sphinx is in far better condition, although the restoration work is questionable, and the Khafre Causeway is also partly exposed. We can also see a better view of the ruined rest house of King Tut, located to the south of the causeway. And that pretty much ends the footage. I'll play it again one more time, without the red curtains and old fashioned silent film score, but something more in keeping with the mystery of ancient Egypt. Thank you for watching, please do comment, like and subscribe, because I have more colorized rare vintage footage to come.
Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.